Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video about the Works Library, I'm going to talk about teaching and storing locations for components. Now, storing the location of a component is important if you need a specific position and orientation for a component when you create it, move it, or place it in a container. In this case, a Works Process component. Let's get started by creating a basic layout. I'll go to the ECAT tab and expand Web Catalog by Type, scroll down, click Works, and then verify I'm using the latest version of the Works Library. I'll now drag a Works Task Control into the 3D world and add a Works Process component. In this example I'm going to be creating components so I can add those components to my layout now and create them later during a simulation. So go back to the ECAT tab and click Products and Containers and let's make a palette with boxes. So I'll scroll down and find an item called Euro Palette and add that to the 3D world. I'll now scroll all the way down to the bottom and drag a Visual Components box into my layout. Notice I placed it pretty close to the palette. I'll click Fill and adjust my view. I'll now select the Works Process component here, go to the Param tab, General Sub tab, and down to this section here. In the past, you taught and stored locations for components that were detected within an area in a Works Process component. That detection area is controlled by these properties, C length, C width, C height, and a new property called height offset, which is the distance from the component's origin along the z-axis in its local coordinate system. For example, you can see here that the bounding box for the works process component is on the floor. At this height offset, here is the detection area. You can still use the old method of teaching and storing locations, so I'll select the box here and snap it to a location that's within this detection area. I'll select the Works Process component and then click Teach Location. So the component detects the box and stores its location in this property called Current Locations. So whenever I create, place, or move a component that has a name or product ID matching this stored location, that's where the component will be located in this Works Process component. To test this out, let's go and create this box. So I'll copy its name. And let's go and put the box back on the floor and drag it away from the palette. I'll select the Works Process component and make a Create task. So I'll paste in that box's name. And I'll leave New Product ID blank. So by default, the component's name is its product ID, which will match this stored location name here. So if I create the task, I um, actually only want to create the box once during the simulation, so I'll go to the task subtab here and I'll change run task times to 1. I'll run the simulation and yep, the box is created at this stored location here. If I select it, notice its product ID is the same as the stored location here. Now what would happen if I gave the box a different product ID when I created it? Well, I'll show you. I'll reset the simulation, clear all the tasks, and then for new product ID, I'll type in AAA. You can type in any product ID you want. I'll create the task. And notice AAA does not match any stored location here in this component. So if I run the simulation, the box is created at the default frame location in Works Process. So when I select it, notice the box has a new product ID. I can now translate the box and rotate it a bit. It's still within that detection area. If I select the Works Process component, and for only contain components property, if I actually turn this off, I'll talk about it later. If I now click Teach Location, it detects the box, but it detects the location for this product ID of AAA. So I now have two stored locations for the same component, but they just simply have different product IDs. Now, the latest version of the Works Library allows you to teach and store the location of any component in the 3D world. That means the component does not have to be within the detection area of the Works Process component. For example, we have the Europalette over here. You could copy the name or the product ID of any component in the 3D world. In this case, I have to copy the name of the palette. I'll select the Works Process component. And now for Teach Location, for only contained components, go ahead and turn this off for now. And in the Selection property, go ahead and type in the names of components and product IDs that you want to store the location for in your layout. So I'll go and paste in Euro Palette, and then click Teach Location. And what happens is the component finds the closest or nearest component that has a name or property matching the value you entered here in selection, and then stores that location 
with that value. So now if I go ahead and clear all the tasks and I create a Euro palette, let's get rid of this product ID of AAA. I'll create the task, I'll reset the simulation, and let's go ahead and move the palette away from its stored location. So let's actually move it over here. When I run the simulation, yep, notice the palette is created at this stored location. Now to talk a little bit more about the distance or proximity of components, I'll select the created component here and go ahead and move it just a bit farther away from the works process component. I'll select the static component and move it closer to the works process component. So now when I teach the location for any type of component that matches Euro palette, you need to make sure that you turn off the only contain components checkbox here so it evaluates the selection property otherwise it would ignore it. So if I click teach location and I reset the simulation and I move the static component, actually the static palette, out of the way and run the simulation. Yep, the palette is now created at that new taught location because the static component was originally closer than the created palette that was over here. But let's say you wanted to override the location of a component in the 3D world. You just wanted to evaluate a certain group of components. Well, you can do that. So using the same example we used before, I'll go ahead and move the created palette over here. I'll take the static palette and move it closer to the works process component. I'll now select the works process component and notice by default when you select it the only contain components property is turned on. And what that means is that only the components that have been created in and are currently contained in the works process component or ones that have been moved into or placed there are evaluated and their locations are stored. So it doesn't even matter what you put in the selection property here. I could just type in a bunch of numbers if I wanted to. And when I click Teach Location, it's going to detect those locations for the contained components. So notice I get feedback here that the Euro palette location was updated. So if I take this static component, oops, sorry, let's actually select the static palette over here and move it over here. So if I now go ahead and run the simulation again, notice that now I have the Euro palette created over here. Now one thing to remember is that a stored location references the origin of a works process component, not the 3D world origin. What that means is that a stored location is not a global position in the 3D world. For example, I have a pattern of boxes here. I created a box on each shelf in the rack, and the stored location for the visual components box is actually here in the rack, but it's relative to the works process component over here. So when I translate the works process component, notice all the boxes move with it. And when I reset the simulation and run it again, the pattern of boxes is created relative to the works process component. Now, it's good practice to not have an arbitrary position of your works process component when teaching locations. For example, I could have actually positioned the works process component somewhere on the rack that's easy to reference or others to work with. It also might be helpful if you parent the rack to the works process component or vice versa. Overall, it's good practice not to have a really far out location that you're teaching to the works process component. That concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our community at community.visualcomponents.net, and I hope you have a wonderful day.